So the first thing that I wanted to try to get your perspective on is how you came to the understanding that AI and that the new technologies were going to be impactful on the work that you were doing and then kind of the way that you acted on, on that realization. I think that I've known for a long time, at least in my adult life, that time is the biggest constraint that humans face. And I've always been focused on process improvements, efficiency to expand what I can accomplish and what my team can achieve at work. So for personal life and for professional life, if I can make my life easier and get the things done faster and better, I'm all for that. And really the point for me was AI can not only do those types of things, but it can take it an order of magnitude higher by handling large data sets and even deriving non-obvious insights. So it goes beyond the limitations of the compute power of a single human at a single second in time, um, which is really fascinating to me. Uh, and like many people, of course, I began dabbling with ChatGPT. And while it was super impressive at first, it was really limited in its knowledge and ability. But I knew immediately that this was going to be a big thing. Like this was like the iPhone or not just the iPhone, but in general smartphones or the internet or and the advent of apps and all that kind of thing. And so each subsequent model release that I've seen has really taken the immediate possibilities up exponentially. Can you walk me through the way that you've rethought some of the things that you and your team do day to day and how you got to, the, to that moment of realization? So by day job, uh, I'm a portfolio manager at Double Line. It's been around for about 15 years, but I want to say for the first, you know, 10 or 15 years, you're working in startup mode, you're creating systems and processes, and try, And then when you're growing very rapidly, you're just trying to plug every hole possible so that you're ready to take on the day. And then you get to some point of maturation, right? And so I think that's where we were at. And at that confluence, I took on management of the team and the portfolios, there are a lot of parts of our of everyone's job that tend to be repetitive or are not really using critical thinking as much or on the other hand need to use critical thinking but you're so time constrained that you're not able to spend as much time as you want on that and so because of this confluence of timing i really was able to sit down and rethink every stage of the process from a research analyst, a trader, from a portfolio manager. And to me, the research analyst part immediately struck out as an obvious area that AI could vastly improve even currently without like significant, I, I guess, programming with sig significant expertise in, in IT and in prompt engineering, like really just playing around with the existing platforms. We were able to start creating custom GPTs in ChatGPT. I don't know if you remember that. And in my case, I used a little bit of prompt engineering to figure out how to create the persona of a junior credit analyst within ChatGPT and try to feed it source documents, um, have it summarize them, and then give me back a filled out template doing some you know, basic credit analysis. And honestly, the results were pretty good, but the more I pushed it, the more I refined, the more I was able to see the limitations. I mean, every time I ran it, I got a different answer. So that's one issue. Uh, another is the well-known hallucinations. And it did start to hallucinate and give me back responses that were either untrue or not in the source document. Mostly it was not in the source document. And so a lot of times it would point out to general knowledge. So you'd ask for references, where did you find this information? And then it would ultimately point back to you to general uh, knowledge, which is 
not exactly what you want to see when you're doing research work. You want to see some citations. What is this analysis or um, statement based on? And honestly, it was difficult to constrain uh, the responses to the source document provided as like an individual user in creating a custom GPT without doing any you know, sort of engineering on the back end. Um, so that was kind of my experience going back to what I said as humans having time as the biggest constraint. I think the biggest constraint in 2025 is you actually have too much information and you don't know how to get through all of it and synthesize it, analyze it, and decide what, how important and how uh, meaningful each piece of data is. And so being, that funnel, being that funnel, is really what makes you good as a credit analyst um, and it makes you excel over time. So I like to think that I did a pre pretty decent job of that and it definitely helped propel me uh, forward in my path. You could talk a little bit about the uh, like wave a magic wand scenario that we're going for right now with uh, yeah. the AI uh, analyst tool. Then maybe we can get into a little bit of the specifics about how we're going to implement it and the ways in which that's going to be impactful for the team. Totally. The first thing I'll say is a comment on what you said about um, people on the front line using the tools. And I'll say that with Doubleline, it's been great because they gave Copilot to everyone in the company last year. And it was basically like, hey, this is a moderate investment subscription on an annual basis, but you guys go out there and you see what you can make of it and how you can improve your productivity. It was very um, grassroots. And I agree with you. I think that is the way to do it because then people within their own roles will find solutions and ways to be more efficient and ways to use this tool. Instead of doing that top-down directive of, oh, we need to change this entire system. Uh, I think it's a lot easier when you do that grassroots uh, type of solution. And that is kind of how I got to this idea of creating a credit analyst tool. And so what I'll say about the credit analyst job, I think will help give context as to how I got there. So, so much of the job is reading, summarizing, and reporting on financial information, headlines, news, et cetera. And so it's taking in massive amounts of data and information, distilling it down, analyzing it, creating investment ideas, generating them, and then communicating them to a portfolio manager to ultimately get implemented. And so, so this is a very interesting role, but a lot of it is tremendous volumes of information. So how can we make that faster? How can we make an analyst a super analyst, right? And so I got this idea for myself, of course, selfishly, how do I you know, improve myself? Uh, is to create basically a junior analyst or some type of kind of helper to a credit analyst. So go out, read all those source documents, summarize them, and give me back the answers to these key areas that I think about when I analyze a company that actually helped me make that investment decision. So it's not really changing how the investment decision is done, but it's about being able to go through more data and to get the answers that you are seeking more quickly to allow you to analyze that and get to the answer faster. And so that's the, that's the key to me. It's, it's faster, it's broader, it's bigger. And so um, I started trying to create this tool myself in ChatGPT as you and I have talked about on numerous occasions. And it just couldn't quite get there. It really does need a back-end support to get to the level that I would like it to be. But I was able to get, at least get a proof of, hey, this is a good idea. I can see that this is possible. The wheels are turning. And so then I was able to partner with our chief technology officer, told him about this idea, and I had asked him, you know, where are we going? What other types of initiatives are we working on? 
and he was super interested in it, of course, um, in the idea of harnessing this technology and having real tangible results. Like, what's an ROI? And for me, it's like, as an analyst, I'm spending maybe 20 plus hours compiling all this information, synthesizing it, uh, working on the thesis, the idea, and putting it together into a report to pitch it to a PM. And now I'm leading this team. And so I have five people reporting to me that are doing that very same function. So you can see I'm, you know, I would be essentially fivefold benefiting my team if I could get this to work. And then beyond that, obviously, you know, my team uses it. There are other teams that could use it too when it gets to that point. And how do you envision the team working with the tool? It's almost like a research tool for the credit research analysts. And so it helps them synthesize the information that's in thousands of do pages of documents, which of course they are still reading. But the reality is now you have every page read, every line read and synthesized. And so it gives them a much more robust picture and story to curate for their investment thesis. So not only are you reducing the time spent on just that synthesis, uh, synthesis into a credit memo report, but you're also allowing them to put in more source documents, more information than a human could actually consume in an hour or less time. And so, you know, maybe you're spending 20, 30 hours on doing this job or this part of the role, and now you can do it in a couple of hours. That's a huge benefit because that means they can look at more situations, more ideas, and go through uh, and really make our portfolio as ideal as it can be. It's really about that idea generation and controlling for risk and being able to understand your risk better. So I really think that this is a time saving, but also an enhancer of what they're able to digest. So uh, the idea is, it's amazing and I'm really excited and I love the idea of calling it super analyst, but that, that's kind of the human machine interface, right? And so then there's a lot of refining back and forth. How do you, how do you tell the machine what to do, right? It's, and a lot of that is the prompt engineering, refining, and uh, narrowing down of the information and then identifying like what are your reliable sources what do you want to have included in the analysis and that's been a really good process um, I, th I think it's going really well can you just give us a brief overview uh, to the extent that you can about the way those systems are laid out at double line and the way that we're going to be integrating a tool like this um, short, medium, and long term, if you want to split it out, that's totally fine uh, with those existing systems. Cause, because I think a lot of people are wondering, like, do I have to throw away everything that we've built so far? Or can we build on top of it? Or how does this talk to all of my other information? So just so people can understand the way that looks for your firm. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of flexibility in how you implement solutions, which I think is great because you're not tied or married to anyone. Um, model or provider and I think I think that's something that's important um, for people to realize you don't have to you know go out and partner with open AI there's a lot of different things that you can do different uh, bots or whatever you want to call them to run your system or solve your problem so for us we rely a lot on Microsoft and Azure and so we would like to be very much in the Microsoft ecosystem um, as an investment company and as uh, a regulated entity, we're very sensitive about where our data is stored. And I know all of our competitors feel the same way. So like if you're in a bank or in um, asset management, you're gonna feel the same way. You feel good about the vendors that you already have because you've done the due diligence, you understand the contracts, ins and outs. And so you're able to, being able to build within that ecosystem is super helpful. We have our own software also internally to store documents and research, et cetera, et cetera. So being able to tie into that, I think makes it a lot easier. And I'm confident that we're gonna be able to do that as well. Mm -hmm.